Well, back before my hip accident, which was uh, about 16 years ago, I was just starting to get into hiking. Now, at the time, I lived in central Kansas. Now, I want to tell you something. You might think that Kansas is not a good place to hike, but it really is. The scenery is so beautiful when you go hiking in Kansas and you can see for miles. But in Kansas hiking, there's not a lot of mystery <laughs> because you can see for miles. So I wonder what's around the next bend. Oh, right. I already know because I can see it right there. <laughs> right? So... When my wife and I were, uh, my, my, we were just married, we were going on our honeymoon actually to Colorado, we both thought we need to try some Colorado hiking and see what that's like. And uh, I'll tell you, as many of you probably know, it was pretty great. And the first trail we tried, uh, we loved. The trail was obvious, it was perfectly maintained, we saw this beautiful scenery, and our legs were a little sore afterwards, uh, but, but at least a few days after that, we decided we'd try again, and this time try a more difficult trail. <laughs> and what we learned was that the, the was that the trail was ob is that the the, uh, the the trail was different. You know, sometimes there'd be some debris on the trail. You know, we can we can get around that. Sometimes the path would disappear for a little while and come back up. You know, it would disappear for a, a little while and come back, and then it would disappear for a little while and not come back. <laughs> and we realized we were lost. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, we weren't so far from civilization that we couldn't find our way back. We're still pretty lightweights in the, in the hiking world. But we learned a lesson that day. And one of the things we learned was that there are markers on trails like that. Now, I looked for a picture on the internet, and that's the closest that I could find that was free to use and all that. I'll tell you, the ones on this trail didn't have the, uh, the little, little hiker person on it. They were, it was just a color, but we eventually figured out that that's a signal. That's a signal so that you know uh, uh, which way the trail goes, but we didn't know there were signals at first. It seemed like the trail had just disappeared. Now, as I say, fortunately, we weren't far away. We were able to find our way back without much trouble. Uh, but we learned a lesson on that sometimes it takes a little bit of homework and sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to stay on the right path. Now, staying on the path is, of course, a helpful metaphor for many things in life. <laughs> and I think it's the surprising, underappreciated heart of today's scripture, too. Now, it's not something you're going to see at first. And I'm going to read the scripture again for you, as I usually do. And in fact, I'm going to read a little bit longer version of it, too, because John, uh, John's gospel loves to tell long stories like that. But... Listen closely for that theme of staying on the path. And I'll bet you won't find it at first, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a trail marker when we get a little further along, all right? Okay, there was a Pharisee. Now, Pharisees were religious leaders of the day. There was a certain group, uh, kind of like denominations. Maybe you could compare it to Catholic or Protestant or something like that. I don't know. Not quite, but it's similar. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night, wonder why he did that, and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born anew. God's Spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now Nicodemus, I'm just going to add, thoroughly confused at this point, said, how are these things possible? Jesus answered, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? 
I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the human one. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loves the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Now we need to talk for a minute about this idea of eternal life, because there's a popular belief these days that eternal life refers to what happens when we die. But that's not what eternal means. Eternal doesn't mean it starts when we die. Eternal means the kind of life that's not connected to time. The kind of life that is unbounded by time. The kind of life that is somehow past, present, and future all at once. That's what eternal life means. And it's not something that we wait till we die to start. It's something that we can enter now. It's an unbounded life. It's a fuller kind of life that we can access even now. Now we can talk about what happens when we die, you know, uh, and uh, many believe that that's when we'll know it more fully, but that doesn't mean we can't know eternal unbounded life now too. And it also means that anything less than eternal life is to live a life that's bounded, a life that's trapped, a life that has a lid on it, a life that can only go so far, a life that has limits. So how do we get it? How do we get this eternal life? Well, as a pastor, it's always tempting to talk about spiritual practices, prayer, worship, coming together like this, study of scripture, you know, coming to communion uh, as we're going to do here in a few minutes. But here's the thing. Those things can't give you eternal life. Prayer can't give you eternal life more than anything else. It can only be a gift that comes from God. It can only be God that opens your eyes through it all. Listen to this part again. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Now, Nicodemus asked, what do you mean? He says, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, unless you are born not only in the normal way, but also born anew into God's kingdom, born anew into uh, God's eternal life, unless you are, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. It's a gift from God. That's grace, you see. We can't earn our way into the life God wants for us. We can't work our way into it, even with things like prayer. It can only be a gift that God gives us. But here's the thing. Generation after generation of faithful have shown us another truth. That this kind of birth into God's kingdom isn't one and done. You know, we celebrated the baptism of Micah this morning, but I'll tell you, he's got a whole life ahead of him of living into this eternal life just as we all do. You know, this wasn't Nicodemus's first encounter with religion. He was a literal religious leader. He was a teacher. It's clear that Nicodemus had been working his whole life on entering what Jesus calls eternal life. He had been after this his entire life. And uh, we, we see uh, that, that even after this moment, it is still effort for him to live into it. It isn't something that happens in a moment. It's a journey because there's something about eternal life, an unbounded life, that's more than we can hold on to. It's more than we can grasp. We can cling, but it falls through our fingers like picking up sand. We fall off. We get distracted. Dare I say we lose the path in front of us. And you see, that's where the spiritual practices come in prayer, reading scripture, attending worship, Christian community, all of those things are the trail markers. 
They're the trail markers. So that when we lose the path, when we walk on it for a while and are comfortable, and then all of a sudden we find we're, we're in the wilderness again and we don't know where we are. It's prayer and scripture, all the spiritual practices that are trail markers that show us the way to eternal life once again. I want to tell you the story of when I first began to figure this out. Hear how I said that in such a way that doesn't imply I haven't figured out yet? That's on purpose. <laughs> you know, I mentioned uh, uh, at, at the start there that we were hiking before, my, uh, before I had my accident where I broke my hip. Well, when I began to figure this out was reflecting on that accident. So it was right after church on a Sunday morning. It was the uh, Sunday after Christmas, and I fell in the parking lot on the ice. And just a, a freak thing, just fell, legs up, rear end down. Uh, they took me to the emergency room, and uh, the doctors were like, oh, yeah, you're probably just bruised, but we'll send you in for an x-ray, you know, just to be safe and all that. And uh, when we came back, the, the ER doc acted like he'd never seen a 30-year-old with a broken hip before. Probably because he hadn't. That is not a normal thing. I landed exactly right wrong on it. It wasn't what I was expecting, especially since he kind of set it up as the least likely of the outcomes, right? But as soon as the ER doctor had finished giving me that news and told me that I was going to need surgery to repair my hip, I was 30 years old. I didn't know anything about surgery. I didn't know anything about any of that. So there was shock and panic that set in almost immediately. And as soon as the doctor left, the nurses started prepping me for surgery. I'd never had an IV before or any of that. I was scared. <laughs> I was panicked. My wife of only about six months was four or five hours away, something like that. My parents were an hour away and I was there and I was totally alone and I was scared. And then, in the midst of it all, you want to know what happened? Gratitude. Where did that come from? <laughs> Gratitude. In the midst of all the fear, in the midst of the nurses and all pre prepping me for surgery, I suddenly realized that they were saving me. I suddenly realized that the things that they were doing, the very things that I was afraid of, is what was going to make me better. And I looked up at the nurse and I said, thank you. Now, I can't say there wasn't more fear as, uh, as we actually went into it. But that turning point moment, I later realized, was a moment where I was born anew. It was a moment where by God's grace, not by my own actions, I realized that the world was bigger than I had thought. I realized that my life was bigger than I thought. And all of a sudden I began to see in a, in a less bounded, more eternal way. Now, since then, I've fallen off more than once. And I've been trapped in my own little world again. On my good days, I still see the world around me like that. But on my bad days, I'm trapped, as I said, in my own self. But by God's grace, on that day, I was born again. And again, and again, and again, every day ever since. And it's always the spiritual practices, the trail markers, that get me back on the path. Maybe this is your moment. Maybe this is such a moment for you to get out of your own self and to see the world in a more unbounded way, to take a step into eternal life. Maybe this moment of worship is a trail marker for you. Or when we come to the table in a minute, maybe that will be your moment of being born anew. Born anew. It may very well be. Or Maybe for you, this is yet another return <laughs> with an emphasis on yet another, <laughs> born again with the emphasis on again. Regardless, I hope that today is a trail marker for you that opens you up to seeing life more eternally, to living life more eternally. Because to do anything less is stifling. It's what it means to be lost but to walk the path of an unbounded eternal life. That is the salvation of Jesus.
Would you pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks for all that you have done for us. We give you thanks for every time that you have opened our eyes to see more than just ourselves and this tiny world around us. We give you thanks for every glimpse you've given us of eternity. And, O oh God, as we come before the table this day, we admit that we come to you with heavy hearts for the times that we've lost the path, for the times that we've become stranded, for the times that we've become trapped inside of our own stifling selves. Please forgive us, God, and thank you that your spirit always blows in us such that we may once again be born anew into your eternal life. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.